In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires know, and, and from whom, whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, Jesus Christ, to save us from our sins, and to be our advocate in heaven, and to bring us to eternal life. Let us need to confess our sins in penitence and faith, firmly resolve to keep God's commandments, and to live in love and peace with all. Most merciful God, Father, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that we have sinned in thought, word and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been, help us to amend what we are, and direct what we shall be that we may do justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with you, our God. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and, and peace, peace to, to his, his people, people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Eternal Father, whose Son Jesus Christ ascended to the throne of heaven, that he might rule over all things as Lord and King. Keep the Church in the unity of the Spirit and in the bond of peace, and bring the whole created order to worship at his feet, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit. One God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Ephesians. I have heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love towards all the saints. And for this reason, I do not cease to give thanks for you as I remember you in my prayers. I pray that God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation as you come to know him, so that with your eyes of your heart enlightened, you may know what is the hope to which he has called you. What are the riches of his glorious inheritance among the saints? And what is the immeasurable greatness of his power for those of us who believe? according to the workings of his great power. God put this power to work in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at the right hand in the heavenly places, far above all rule and authority and power and dominion, and above every name that is named. 
not only in this age, but also in the age to come. And he has put all things under his feet, and he has made him the head over all things for the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory, Glory to, to you, you, O Lord. Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, When the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, then he will sit on the throne of his glory. All the nations will be gathered before him, and he will separate people one from another, as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. And he will put the sheep at his right hand, and the goats at the left. Then the king will say to those at his right hand, Come, you that are blessed by my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. I was naked, and you gave me clothing. I was sick, and you took care of me. I was in prison and you visited me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry and gave you food, or thirsty and gave you something to drink? And when was it that we saw you a stranger and welcomed you, or naked and gave you clothing? And when was it that we saw you sick or in prison and visited you? And the king will answer them, Truly, I tell you, just as you did it to one of the least of these who are members of my family, you did it to me. Then he will say to those at his left hand, You that are cursed, depart from me into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry and you gave me no food. I was thirsty and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger and you did not welcome me, naked and you did not give me clothing, sick and in prison and you did not visit me. Then they will also answer, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or naked or sick or in prison and did not take care of you? Then he will answer them, <clears throat> truly, I tell you, just as you did not do it to one of the least of these, you did not do it to me. And these will go away into eternal punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, to you O Christ. Christ.
the sun came out. So I thought I'd come for another walk rather than recording this in my study. Today is the Feast of Christ the King. It brings to conclusion the great, perhaps the long, uh, is a better word for it, season of Trinity. It brings to an end an entire cycle of the church year. Next week, on the first Sunday of Advent, we will find ourselves in a new church year. This past year, in our Sunday readings, we've been reading the Gospel of Matthew, almost straight through. There's been true for other books of the Bible, including Paul's letter to the Romans, one of the seminal works of the New Testament. The passage for today's Gospel, once again, returns to the theme of the Kingdom of Heaven, as it was for the last two Sundays prior to this. First, we had, uh, though it was largely missed because it was Remembrance Sunday as well, uh, the separation of the wise bridesmaids who brought extra oil for their lamps from the foolish bridesmaids who forgot to bring extra oil and were unprepared when the bridegroom arrived. We must be prepared as we wait. Then there was the separation of the good stewards who multiplied the talents given to them from the lazy steward who buried his talent. The preparedness we are called to in this whole time of waiting is not a passive time, even in lockdown. It's a time to work and work hard. And so what do we have today? When the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, all the nations will be gathered before him and he will separate people one from another as a shepherd separates sheep from the goats. For I was hungry, you gave me food. I was thirsty, you gave me drink. I was a stranger and you welcomed me. Naked and you clothed me sick. You visited me in prison. You came to see me. Truly I tell you, just as you did it to one of the least of these members of my family, you did it to me. So what does this one mean? Well, there are as many interpretations of this parable as any person could reasonably think up. But there are some strands that speak to me a little more than others. Firstly, from the context of how the words are used elsewhere in Matthew, this is about all the nations, not just Israel, not just Christians, but about all the nations coming before the throne of God. Secondly, it talks about how the people of the nations have treated, to put it literally, the least of these my brothers. This is often used to give a sermon about what are referred to in the church as the corporal works of mercy, about how we should treat those in each of those situations. In today's world, much of that work has become the preserve of institutions and become professionalised, so that it's almost impossible now to work, certainly to work regularly in hospitals or prisons, either full-time or part-time as care workers or as volunteers without going through extensive selection. And no bad thing. But there are also everyday opportunities, both in our churches and our communities, where we can welcome the stranger and look out for those in different kinds of need. A kindly listening ear, taking time, with those around us, a word of encouragement to those in difficulty. All of this is undoubtedly the work of the kingdom. One thing that always sticks out in this is the judgment, though, that comes on the goats. You that are accursed, depart from me into the eternal fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. Now, the phrase we heard earlier, the least of my brothers, 
is often used by Jesus to refer to his followers. And it's worth remembering Matthew gives us this teaching at the end of a long discourse on the end times that Jesus is giving to that group, the gathered group of twelve. With them as the audience, is this a teaching to encourage them in the face of what's to come? A sort of, don't worry, those who mistreat you will get their just desserts? Maybe. But it's also much, much more. It may not be easy to accept a parable of judgment like the one we consider today, but it is necessary for us to seek the truth of its meaning. I'd like to suggest that right now, the time when for the purposes of our public worship, we're not allowed in our church buildings. There's a very clear message from this parable, and it's one we desperately need to hear right now. Today, Jesus teaches us that when we stand before God, we won't be asked how well we worshipped, whether in church, at home, or anywhere else. Instead, Christ our King will look at how our worship has transformed us into people who actively care for those in need. God grant us the grace to meet that challenge and that call. Amen. We stand to declare our faith in the words of the creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. In the power of the Spirit, we sit early to bring our prayers to the Lord. Most gracious God, we humbly pray for your holy Catholic Church. Fill it with all truth, in all truth, with all peace. Where it is corrupt, purge it. Where it is in error, direct it. Where anything is amiss, reform it. Where it is right, strengthen and confirm it. Where it is in want, furnish it. Where it is divided, heal and united in your love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O God the Father, good beyond all that is good, fair beyond all that is fair in whom is calmness, peace, and concord. Mend the dissensions that divide us one from another, and bring us back into a unity of love, that we may bear some likeness to your divine nature, 
Make us one in the fellowship of a good mind, through that peace of yours, which makes all things peaceful, and through the grace and mercy and tenderness by which you, O Lord, are our Father, forever and ever. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, the fountain of all goodness, bless our Sovereign Lady Queen Elizabeth and all who are in authority under her, that they may order all things in wisdom and equity, righteousness and peace, to the honour and glory of your name and the good of your Church and people, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. Creator God, you made all things, and all you made was very good. Show us how to respect the fragile balance of life. Guide by your wisdom those who have power to care for our destiny and for the environment, that by the decisions they make, life may be cherished and a good and fruitful earth be preserved for future generations through Jesus Christ our Lord. Lord in your mercy, hear our prayer. Most merciful Father, you have called us to be a caring church, reflecting in our lives your infinite care for us your children. Help us to fulfil our calling and to care for one another in an unselfish fellowship of love and to care for the world around us in sharing with it the good news of your love and serving those who suffer from poverty, hunger and disease. Lord in your mercy, hear our prayer. May the God of all love, who is the source of our affection, take our friendships into his keeping, that they may continue and increase throughout life and beyond it. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the Living God, set your passion, cross and death between your judgment and our souls, now and in the hour of our death. Grant mercy and grace to the living, rest to the departed, to your church peace and concord, and to us sinners forgiveness and everlasting life and glory. For with the Father and the Holy Spirit, you are alive and reign, now and forever. Merciful Father, accept, accept these prayers, prayers for, the, for sake the sake of your, your Son, our, our Saviour, Saviour, Jesus Christ. Christ. Amen. Amen. We are the body of Christ. In one spirit we are all baptised into one body. Let us then pursue all that makes for peace and builds up our common life. The peace of the Lord be always with you and also with you.
have this bread to set before you, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this wine to set before you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become for us the cup of salvation. Blessed, Blessed be God forever. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. Father, we give you thanks and praise for your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your living Lord, for whom you have created all things, who was sent by you in your great goodness to be our Saviour. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he took flesh, and your Son, born of the Blessed Virgin, he lived on earth and went about among us. He opened wide his arms for us on the cross. He put an end to death by dying for us and revealed the resurrection by rising to new life. So he fulfilled your will and won for you, a holy people. And now we give you thanks that he is the King of glory, who overcomes the sting of death, and who opens the kingdom of heaven to all believers. He is seated at thy right hand in glory, and we believe that he will come to be our judge. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and saying, Holy. Holy. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God, God of the power and, and might, heaven and earth, earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Lord, you are holy in you, the source of all holiness, granted by the power of the Holy Spirit, and according to your holy will, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, who in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ has died. Christ, Christ is risen. Christ will Lord come Lord. again. And so far, they're calling to mind his death on the cross. His perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world. Rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension. And looking for his coming in glory. We celebrate this memorial of our redemption as we offer you this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. We bring before you this bread and this cup. And we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send the Holy Spirit on your people. We gather into one in your kingdom, all who share this one bread and one cup, so that we in the company of Mary and of Joseph and all the saints may praise and glorify you forever through Jesus Christ our Lord, by them and with them and in them, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be yours, 
Almighty God, forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray with confidence, as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who Lord art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, thy, thy will be done, done on earth as it is, is in heaven. heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Jesus is the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be you. The body of Christ. Amen. The blood of Christ. Amen. Amen. Stir up, O Lord, the wills of your faithful people, that they plenteously bring forth the fruit of good works, may by you be plenteously rewarded, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And we say again, God, God of, truth, of truth, we, we have seen, seen with our eyes and, and touched, touched with our hands the bread of life. life. Strengthen our faith, that we may grow in love for you and for each other, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of the Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. The Eucharist has ended. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In, In the, the name, name of, of Christ. Christ. Amen. Amen.